Hi, I'm Don Singletary and welcome to the channel. I think we're the only one of its kind. We only do one thing here. We focus on teaching beginners, traders who never traded futures before, how to use these new affordable one-tenth size smaller micro e-minis to day trade for extra income, for fun, or for whatever reason you like. And today we're going to have a featured trade of the week, which we do at every week. I'll be the first to tell you this type of trading is not for everyone, not for your retirement funds, college funds, or those things. But if you have some discretionary income that you can afford to put into a higher risk type of trading, I can save you from buying lotto tickets and a plane trip to Vegas because this kind of trading is a lot of fun and uh, it's very risky. So remember, trade responsibly, will you? Okay, now you can see this is on a Thursday morning, the 9th of September, and at 8.30 every Thursday morning, a job report comes out. Uh, I won't go into the details of this morning's report, which was at 8.30, but it was uh, rather neutral and didn't swing the market one way or the other very much. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. Okay, now at 9.30, the market opens, and you can see here for the next two hours, all the way up until almost 11.30, from 9.30 until 11.16. The market goes up a little bit from uh, 45.10 to around 45.20, only 10 points. That's not a great big swing for an hour and a half in the uh, stock index futures market. So it's kind of a neutral day. And when I get up to the time around 11.16, I look in the lower pane down here inside the red circle. I see the green line below the red line. Now, they're both above that zero line in the MACD. But since there's no major trend for the day, I suspect that the next price move is probably going to be down because the market's actually pretty flat. Now, if you're new, you don't yet know that trading 10... Um, 10 points in the S&P in an hour and a half is a very low volatility. And to those of us who trade, we recognize that as a chance, low volatility that is, that uh, it might not be a high risk time to enter the market. So I smell lower risk. I go in for the trade at 1116 and let me show you what happened. Okay, we're on the live trading screen now. Same setup that I just described to you. Over on the left side is my watch list, and I have the uh, S&P 500 selected there. I'm going to enter this trade with a bracket order, so I click on the bid. I change it to two contracts and click the bracket. Now, I bring the bracket over to the left side of the screen there so I can see my chart on the right side. And I start contemplating how much I might want to risk on this trade. I put in an order to sell at 45.20, two contracts. And I initially put that stop in, as you can see, up at about $52.50, up about uh, five points from where I'm shorting the two contracts. And I put a target down there. Now you can put any target you want in. The market doesn't listen to you, so it's pretty uh, arbitrary. I put the uh, target price at 4500 just to have a figure to uh, put in there. Now I double check my figures. The market's down trading at 4519 now and send the trade along its way. Let's see what happens. Now you notice I initiated the trade with a bracket order. So it opens the trade and then puts in a one cancels the other OCO order. That means it includes a stop and a target. And initially, of course, the trade price, which was 45.19 here. And uh, we're trading even money so far. But uh, on this trade, there's no prevalent trend for the day. So I want to reduce my risk as soon as I can. I uh, start dragging that uh, Tastyworks mouse down and put my stop at 45.2250. So that means I've got uh, basically three and a half points or a $35 stop loss. I'm trading $10 a point because I'm trading two of the contracts. Each contract is $5 a point. So two of them is $10 a point. So if I'm at uh, 45.15, I would be four points ahead. And I would be up $40, which is not the case right now. The trading price is uh, about $10 down from where I initially went in. 
at uh, 4519 it hit 4520 then and now it's back down to even money and a little bit below now you remember when I went into this trade just a couple of minutes ago, the reason that I picked this time and date to trade right here was because of a low volatility. That means while the trade the trade may be slow to develop, it's also not running up and down rapidly in price. So it uh, plays better for your emotions to have a, a trade during low volatility, but uh, sometimes it plays better for your wallet when the volatility is higher. But my first priority is always to avoid risk. You see, I took my Tastyworks mouse there, moved that stop down after two minutes into the trade at 45.21 and a quarter. Now that's two and a quarter points from my entry point. At two and a quarter points times $10 a point would be $22.50 as the maximum I could lose on this trade because I have that stop up there, two and a quarter points up at 45.21 and a quarter. Still trading 45.18, only $10 up in the trade, and everything is going, if slow, it's going very smoothly also. Now you got to remember in this type of trading, you're going to lose about 40% of your trades. And you're going to win somewhere, hopefully, between 55 and 60% of them. So there's no reason we're four minutes into the trade now in a $30 unrealized game. We're trading down at 45.17. I was saying a moment ago, you have to have the mindset that there's no such thing as a trade without some risk. But at this point, with a maximum loss, I'm moving my stop down again. And uh, let's see where I wind up this time. Uh, 4520.5, okay? So now I've got a maximum risk on this trade of only $15. I was saying, emotionally, you can take a loss of $15. It's not going to shake your confidence or bruise your ego or do anything like that. So you're, even though you can't control what happens in the trade, you can control how you feel about it, how you react, and what your expectations are. Now, we knew this trade might move slowly going into it. So, uh, it seems like a, a long time just to move down three and a half points now. Uh, five minutes can seem like an eternity when you're staring at the screen. Now, what I'm doing is what I love to do. I just move my stop down to 45, 18, 50. So, that means I have a free trade. Worst thing can happen in this trade now is I'm going to make $5.00. Not a more than cover the commissions. Uh, so, see, with that stop at 45.18.50, now the stress is off. You can let this thing go and see what happens. Can you wish and can you hope? Sure. Will it make a difference? Probably not. Um, you just don't have control of so many things in this type of trading. I go down and check my MACD. Now, this is always in my view when I'm trading. I just zoomed in on the screens here. Uh, so you could uh, see the uh, the actual trade going on, but my 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 momentum is still going down for this trade. I don't see anything in that MACD indicator I popped up just a moment ago that would uh, change my mind about being into the trade. Now we're trading forty five uh, seventeen, so I'm only up twenty dollars in the trade, and I'm okay with that. I've got to wait and see how this thing plays out. One of the things that beginners mistakenly believe about trading when they start off is that it's always going to be some adrenaline rush and you're going to be on a, a sharp razor's edge all during a trade. Obviously, that's not the case. This trade uh, is very mellow trade. I just got in at a low risk time. I knew that because I'm experienced enough to spot uh, uh, an opportunity that has lower volatility so I can put in the trade. Now I'm trading down at uh, 45, 15, 50. And uh, if the math is right, that's uh, uh, I'm up 35 bucks in the trade. That's my unrealized gain. If I click the mouse and close the trade, it would be realized gain. So you can, it's important you can uh, study those terms. I did go down and move my target up to 45.10. It was off the scale below and you couldn't see it before. I just moved it up deliberately to uh, 45.10 now, and that would give me a, a $90 profit, a full nine points at $10 a point, right? 
Let me talk about what you do not see on the screen right now, and that is my decision making. Right now, the trade has two possible outcomes. Apparently, either I uh, make the five dollars and get stopped out at forty-five eighteen fifty, or I meet the target at forty-five ten and profit ninety dollars. Well, I can tell you now, neither one of those things are going to happen in this trade because it's on. It's a dynamic thing a trade is. It changes during the trade and you have to change your thinking and take every opportunity you can to be able to um, to move that stop down and capture some more profit. At 45.15, what you're not seeing right now is I could click a button on my mouse and make $35 in what? Six or seven minutes, which isn't shabby but I chose not to do that. I'm risking my unrealized gains of $35 in order to continue this trade. So I do have a, a dog in the fight, so to speak. Now I'll go up with my Tastyworks mouse again, and I'm going to try to put in some more, um, some more profit here. And uh, I deliberate, I watch, and as I'm looking, uh, I go down to 45.14.50, the lowest yet it's been on the trade. I move my stop to uh, 45.16.50, so that locks me in $25 on the trade. And uh, I'm going to, the reason I can keep that stop so close, by the way, it's only like one and a half points the stop is away from where it's trading at 45.15. The reason is because of the low volatility. The volatility were higher. I might, uh, I might trail that stop back three or four points or even more. Hey, now you'll notice since I move my stop down, I'm no longer risking all of my unrealized gains in order to continue this trade. That was a conscious decision. 45.16s were my stop set now, so I'm three points ahead if I get stopped out, which is $30 at $10 a point. Trading 45.14 and a quarter right now. That's a new low during the trade. I went down to 45.14 momentarily there. And I moved my stop down to 45.15.50, only a point and a half away. And the trade seems to be wanting to give me a little more profit that I can eke out here. And you can believe, I'm frantically wondering, what should I do with that stop? Can I move it down? It's only a, a point and a half away. Do I risk my existing unrealized gains in order to continue the trade and try for even more profit? And... Um, since I'm trading down at 45.13.50 now, I move my stop down to uh, 45.14 and three quarters points. And you see I'm trading at a new low there. 45.12.50 is where it's going down to. So I go back up and uh, get my mouse again and uh, eke out, so lock in some more profit here. And I move that stop down ever so carefully. Trading 45.12 and a half down there. So I decide for my stop loss, I would uh, put it at 45.13 and, and three quarters again. And I'm just uh, one and three quarters points away from being stopped out of the trade now. So at this point, I don't know if I'm going to hit my target at 45.10 and make the 90 bucks or if I'm going to get stopped out at 45.13 and three quarters. Watch and see what happens. And now my favorite part, we get to count the money. Trade duration was only 11 minutes, $52.50, uh, not shabby. Maximum drawdown, about $12. So I didn't really have to risk that much on this trade. Maximum unrealized gain was $72.50. I think I saw a trade down at 45.11 and three quarters. So I captured about 72.4% of it because I ran that stop so close. And remember, I was able to do that this time in this particular trade because of the low volatility during the time in which I was trading. This is your first time to the channel. Welcome along. Join our more than 10,000 subscribers now by hitting that subscribe and notification button. And that way you won't miss the new videos that I put up uh, each week, sometimes a little bit more than that. I need your help. Hit the like button if you want to see another video like the one you saw today. I count the likes and that's how I know what to make the future videos about on the channel. So uh, it's very helpful if you do that.
I'd really appreciate that. And how about that Tastyworks mouse that click and drag down for the stop while you're looking at the live trading screen. Look for the broker link in the text below this video and you can get more information about Tastyworks. And uh, also there's a free trade simulator down there by the CME, the Chicago Merck Exchange. It has a, a built-in ledger you can export to Excel files and, uh, and tally up your works if you want to. And that's all free, no credit card or anything required. Now because this particular trade was on September 9th, the very next morning, September 10th, is what it's called a rollover date, we stopped trading the September on the 9th and began trading the December contract, the next farther out contract of the micro e minis on the morning of September the 10th. How do I know that? These dates are posted on the CME website and I put the link down below in the text below the video. It's called Rollover. You can look for that link and bring up this page. And you can see right here is Thank where you. today is. Had a great time bringing you that trade today. I want to plug my book here. Thousands of people have used this book to learn how to day trade the micro e minis. Not only does it have all the pertinent information in there, but more importantly, perhaps, it has them in a the right order. You know exactly what's important to know, and uh, it's, it's in a very easy and logical order in the book. It'll set you back about the price of a medium pizza. I would hope that you would make many times your money back from that small investment. Hey, I'll see you next week. This is Don Singletary, and I hope every day is a payday for you. And thank you.